Large language models are here and they're changing the way that we write and changing the way that we learn. While ChatGPT used to be the only main player in town, LLMs are becoming more and more integrated into the tools that we use day to day, such as word processing software. So for example, if you access Word Online with a free personal Microsoft account on the internet browser Edge, you can access Bing Chat and Compose through this sidebar, which is powered through GPT-4. Google Docs now has a Help Me Write feature. If you've signed up for AI workspaces, and this is powered through Bard. And Claude from Anthropic is the new player in town that some people are getting very excited about. So going forward, AI may well be more integrated into our writing processes, which of course may include academic essays and articles. Of course, there will be times where it's not appropriate to use LLMs in your writing, but at other times going forward, you may well be using an LLM to help you write. To illustrate how you might do this, I'm going to start to write this essay about whether men and women are psychologically different using ChatGPT. And through this, we're going to identify appropriate responsible ways to use ChatGPT or other LLM output and some inappropriate, irresponsible ways to use this output. So to get started on this essay, I might as well put this prompt into ChatGPT and see what it spits out. What I could do is copy this and paste it into a Word document and try and pass this off as my own work. Now, hopefully you can see that this would be a very problematic use of ChatGPT because I'd be committing an assessment offence. There is no way I could defend this as my own work. Instead of treating this as our own work, treat it as somebody else's work that you can start to learn from and look at with a bit of criticality. So let's have a look at this essay then. So uh, let's just look at the first paragraph. So it sounds like an introductory paragraph, but if you really look at this, it's not actually saying anything at all. And actually, what we can start to do is copy edit this essay as if we were a friend of chat GPT. So uh, with track changes on is, is quite a good uh, way of, of, of tracking the edits that you're making on this. But let's try and edit chat GPT's essay so that it's it's arguing that the variability between gender is is more important than the differences between gender. So we could say So you can see I've taken the output, I've copy edited it, I've, I've, I've improved upon this. It would still be very problematic for me to then take this and, and, and pass it off on my own. I mean, I've made some changes to it, but ultimately this isn't really my argument. Also, if we go on through this essay, we can see that there's a lot of references in here but I don't know any of these references so far. These aren't references that have been covered in the in the module. So I need to ground this more so in, in the module that I'm working towards. And I want to do some more research into the area to work out what I think about this topic. Because my tutors aren't going to be interested in what ChatGPT thinks. It's going to be interested in how... I've kind of wrestled with this topic material and how I've come to a conclusion. So a great place to start, especially for literature, is the module handbook or the reading list. This is going to give me some core sources that my lecturers are kind of expecting to see and expecting me to engage with. 
At this point, I would be engaging with lecture notes, lecture slides as well to re-engage with those with those core arguments. And through this, I've decided that I'm I'm going to focus my essay on social constructionism and how gender is a social construction. So now I've engaged with the topic materials a little bit more. I've got a slightly more developed understanding of the topic. I might start to engage in some prompt engineering. So this is the art of prompt writing, revising, refining our prompts so that we can get some uh, better output. Now, this is a very new skill, involves a lot of trial and error, but something that seems to work really well is giving the AI a role or a persona. So I've done a couple of these. Uh, and in this one, I've said you're an undergraduate student. Your essay should argue that gender is a social construction. Write the essay in a thousand words and at least one reference per paragraph in APA format. I've also generated a bunch more output. So this one, I've kind of refined the prompt even more saying that uh, you're an undergraduate student on a psychology BSc course argues that gender is a social construction. Therefore, it is problematic to assert that men and women are psychologically different. And I've even given a, a prompt of how the essay should begin. So it's problematic to say men and women are psychologically different. So it's spat out some more stuff for me there. And then what I did just for fun is got it to argue the opposite. So I got it to argue that uh, gender is biologically determined. Therefore, men and women should be considered psychologically different and then changed up the, the how the essay should begin. Men and women are considered to be psychologically different because. So it's super easy with large language models just to generate loads and loads of output and then start to feel a bit overwhelmed in how to sift through it. So that is something to bear in mind. But the most interesting thing for me skimming through these essays is in fact uh, the essay where I got it to argue the opposite. Because although it does put forward the biological perspective, it's emphasising we need to avoid overstating the idea of uh, gender differences in, in psychological research. So that's interesting to me. It's also citing uh, Butler, Judith Butler, that's on my reading list, but it's actually getting it wrong. And, and large language models do often do this. They'll just get stuff wrong. So I'm going to put a comment here to say incorrect. Butler argues that gender is performative. I can also go through some more of these studies with a critical eye. So we have this meta-analytic study by uh, Rodrigue et al. So I'm going to find that reference and I can see that this is an actual reference and it's talking about differences largely in brain volume but other differences as well but what is interesting is if I see who has cited this piece of research we have Janet Hyde and that rings a bell for me because later on in this essay we have height. And if we go back to this paper and search for that author, we can see that it's being discussed in amongst a lot of other interesting research, which is asserting this uh, uh, difference between the male brain and the female brain, this kind of sex differences research. So this has been great. Uh, so I'm starting to make some links. And what I'm going to do is, is cut this from down here and put it up here. I feel like these, these kind of go together, might make these interesting bullet points. 
I could even have a go at kind of paraphrasing this. So I can be clear here uh, how I've manipulated this this text and it's clear to me what I've actually written as well which is important. So I'm starting to get to some interesting ideas but actually at this point I feel like I'm stuck a little bit in North America. I remember a lot of this course was um, taught from the UK feminist uh, perspective so I took myself away from the technology as it's good to do sometimes and looked at some relevant readings to help inform my argument. So uh, the first thing I did was go to a, a textbook, but particularly in looking at the whole sex differences, um, differences between brains, um, we've got uh, Kitzinger's argument here about whether we should study sex differences, whether that is an appropriate kind of use of our time in psychology. So I thought that was really interesting. Uh, and that sort of spawned me to look at some uh, stuff around feminist social psychology. Overall, I'm thinking about critical health psychology. I am also did a little tangent it just reminded me of this brilliant magazine, probably a little bit of a tangent, but um, Cindy Sherman, who uh, was really exploring this idea of uh, performativity of gender. And when you're really confident in your understanding of a topic, you can get really good at prompt engineering giving the large language model a lot of context to work with. You don't want to give it too many instructions at one time because it can get a bit caught up and it can kind of ignore some things and only concentrate on others. So actually giving lots of context but asking it to do just a specific thing turns out some, some good results sometimes. So I'm playing with the idea again of uh, being an undergraduate student but I've just asked it to write an opening paragraph which argues the nature of psychology means it is looking for sex differences between men and women. Hence, men and women may be seen as psychologically different, but this is a making of psychology. So I, I haven't articulated this particularly well at the moment, but I'm just sort of throwing that at GPT and seeing what it does. And it's come up with this very interesting paragraph. The quest to understand the human psyche has long been at the core of the discipline of psychology. It comes out with these, these really weird turns of phrases sometimes. I think, I think we don't need that. I quite like that, may in fact be a product of the methodologies and theoretical framework that psychology itself employs, but rather are constructs that emerge from the very discipline that seeks to study them. Again, I like that. So what are we saying here? It's mainstream psychology's traditional methods and practices So after all of that, here I have a paragraph which has been informed somewhat iteratively with my own research as well. I'm not sure if I would have got to this argument uh, without ChatGPT, and I think it's quite a nice argument. On the other hand, it's a lot of work. It can be quite overwhelming. It's quite a different way of working as an index, as a glossary, as a way of, of looking things up. It's not particularly good. But in terms of being a writing partner, exploring ideas, we can get to some really interesting places. Hopefully this has given you an idea of how you might be able to use a large language model as a writing partner. Large language models are here to stay. There's no stopping this train. So let's work out how we sit alongside them through an academic writing process.